13,760 feet, My Personal Hole in the Sky, is a commercial aviation memoir by Mark L. Berry that revolves around one of the worst single aircraft accidents in America's history. A glowing fireball spreads out from Suzanne 747 like a grenade. At 8.31 p.m., near the longest day of the year, it was still daylight, but not for much longer. The only red in this image should have been the pair of painted red stripes that ran the length of the aircraft's 230-foot fuselage and the red tail displaying TWA's slanted white letter logo. The only orange should have been the impending sunset. Whatever caused TWA Flight 800's center fuel tank to explode, that initial blast would have instantly shoved Suzanne and everyone else on board 12 feet upward and 17 feet to the right, according to William Donaldson, an independent researcher and retired U.S. Navy commander. The Suffolk County Medical Examiner's Office announced that the probable cause of death for almost everyone on board was a snapped neck. That's the feel-good report for victims' families so that we imagine our loved ones departed this world quickly and painlessly. And the bulk of the passengers were seated in the main coach section where this probably was the result. But because first class, in the nose cone of the aircraft, broke off and didn't remain with the rest of the now-burning wings, fuselage, and tail, I can't get this image of Suzanne out of my head. She's free-falling for what would have felt like a lifetime, lap-belted to her mostly blue seat, styled with a single narrow white and two wide red vertical stripes. She's in pure panic while flopping about violently, gasping for breath from the sudden decompression and deafened by the explosion and resulting wind noise, only to finally die with her eyes wide open when impacting the water at roughly triple highway speed in what would later become known as the yellow debris field. My only consolation is that, without being able to turn around, She never saw behind her the hole where the rest of the aircraft should have been. An oblong oval opening to the tumbling sky, bordered by torn cables, shredded aluminum aircraft skin, sheared beams and spars, and accented with sparking severed wires. And I hope she couldn't comprehend what was actually happening if she lived long enough to ride this nearly three-mile-high, free-falling hell-evator all the way down to the ocean's surface, and then sink to 140 feet below, where her body would wait to be recovered. She's gone. In hardly more time than I can hold my breath, her life was over, and mine was torn inside out. The 747 that went up whole and came down in 876 pieces invaded every part of my life. Moving on from real-world disaster is not so easily imagined. I just can't paint over the images in my brain of the streak of light, the burning jet fuel, the now lifeless bodies, and the splintering aircraft. The woman I loved, nestled in the safest, most sacred place in my professional aviation world, was eradicated out of a clear evening sky without so much as a hint of a warning. Six days later, I couldn't turn away from the news. It was everywhere. The New York Times reported, At the ocean's edge, a wrenching farewell. And the Connecticut Post printed an article, Ocean of Tears. Even standing with Suzanne's family knee-deep in the receding tide, floating a rose for her out to sea, along with a crowd of other mourners, was a spectacle captured by cameras, microphones, and a fleet of high-powered antenna trucks. Gone forever was the love of my life, torn from the sky while in the trusted and competent hands of my fellow employees my mentors, and my peers. The red and orange fireball that consumed her life also burned its way into my core existence. I'd lost everything, and even my airline didn't know what to do with the pilot whose fiancé was on that flight. As the days and weeks and months without her stretched on, I look for solace within the familiarity and fraternity of the cockpit, the only thing with meaning I had left, and what I came to know as my aluminum parachute. It wasn't much, but going to the cockpit was something tangible for me to hold on to and a reason to get out of bed. After I buried Suzanne, I buried myself in my work. When all else fails, when those I love die, 
from sudden stops at the falling from the sky by aluminum parachute. 